The back extension, start with your feet against a wall and the ball in prayer position. You're going to lever yourself onto your hips, balance yourself, and then put your hands slowly behind your back. When you feel good and balanced, join me. Set number one. Go down as far as you can, come up as high as you can. One, two. Notice my head isn't nodding up and down. My neck is in line with my trunk. Four, and the ball is resting on my hips. Five, six. So you should feel that right in the small of the back every time you do this. Nice and controlled. Nine and ten. Very good. The back extension, start with your feet against a wall and the ball in prayer position. You're going to lever yourself onto your hips. Balance yourself. And then put your hands slowly behind your back. When you feel good and balanced, join me. Set number one. Go down as far as you can. Come up as high as you can. One. Two. Notice my head isn't nodding up and down. My neck is in line with my trunk. Four. And the ball is resting on my hips. Five. Six. So you should feel that right in the small of the back every time you do this. Nice and controlled. Nine and ten. Very good. The lower back stretch. Use the ball. It's a great way to do a lower back cat stretch. Very simply, you start in prayer position. Give the ball a nice hug, get up on your toes, and rock back and forth. A little side to side, get different areas of the low back. Remember, we're doing this for 20 seconds. So basically, you're assuming the shape of the ball. It's a real feel-good stretch. Five more seconds. Back and forth. Three. Two, one. Excellent. This is an exercise called the reverse fly. It works the mid-back muscles, the lats and the rhomboids. You're going to, I'm using a bench here, you can use a solid chair. Same thing, you can even stand up and do these. So I'm going to have my feet in a slight stride position. Bend over at the, weight, at the waist, keeping my back arched. My forearms are outside of my elbows, and I want to keep them that way through the whole movement. The elbows come straight up. So watch the movement. And let's try them together. Two. It's a funky little movement. You want to keep your elbows even with your shoulders when you do this. Five. And keep your back arched through the whole movement. There's a tendency to want to bring those forearms in and when you get tired, just keep looking at them and make sure the forearms and wrists are outside the elbows. Nine, one more. Okay, stretch for the mid and upper back. Come around with your forearm and press above your elbow so that your arm is coming in towards your chest. You can feel this in the back of the shoulders and the upper back. And we hold for 20. Sometimes to get a, a, a everybody's different, you may have to go a little lower. You may have to go a little higher, see what feels best for you. For me, it's right about there. Halfway through. Again, be 
careful not to overstretch. Three, two, one, and switch. So just breathe into the muscle that you feel is working. See what's going on with it. Nice deep breaths. Five seconds. Two, one, come out of it nice and slowly. The assisted chin up. So what we have here is we have a stool, if you need to stand on it to reach the chin up bar, and we got the chair where you're going to put your leg to help you do the chin ups. Let me demonstrate one and I'll show you exactly how all this stuff works. We're going to use a wide grip first. I step on the stool, assume my wide grip, and I'm going to put one foot on the chair. You have to make sure this chair is stabilized uh, by putting a weight on it or using a heavier chair. Uh, I'm used to this one so I can use this guy here. And what you're going to do, watch the demo, Use your arms as much as possible and your leg as little as possible to keep yourself moving. So as I come off the stool, I bend my lower leg and I'm going to chin myself up. I'm using mostly my arms coming up just toward the ceiling and I want to almost straighten my arms each time. So your foot, your leg, is acting like a self-spotter. That was a lot of uh, demos here. Okay. We're good. Let's do a set together here. Wide grip, chin-ups. We're going to do 10 of them. Using the leg as a self-spotter. So carefully put your leg on this chair. And we release the floor leg from the stool. Here we go, let's do them together. On one. Breathe out on the way up and on the way down. Three. Four. You're going to feel that in the lats, the arms, halfway there. Seven. I'm tired. Eight. One more for good luck. Put the leg on the stool and carefully dismount from the chair. And there you have the assisted wide grip chin. Narrow grip assisted chin up. So we've got the same stuff here. Stool, chair. We're going to use a grip where your palms are facing in. You'll find this a little easier than the wide grip because you're getting a lot of help with the biceps. Let me demonstrate one. So again, we carefully get on this chair because it's unstable. And start with, once your leg comes off the stool, start with your arms in the down position so that your elbow is just a little bit flexed. And you're going to pick yourself up using your leg to help you and come back down. Okay, there's your demo. Let's try 10 together. Palms toward you. Arms in the down position. Our first breath is out. The best for developing the upper back and biceps. Five, we're halfway there. Four to go. Two. One. Good stuff. There's your assistant chin up. Mid and upper back. Come around with your 
forearm and press above your elbow so that your arm is coming in towards your chest. You can feel this in the back of the shoulders and the upper back. And we hold for 20. Sometimes to get a, a, a everybody's different, you may have to go a little lower. You may have to go a little higher, see what feels best for you. For me, it's right about there. Halfway through. Again, be careful not to overstretch. Three, two, one, and switch. So just breathe into the muscle that you feel is working. See what's going on with it. Nice deep breaths. Five seconds. Two, one, come out of it nice and slow. The side try rise. Basically a side push-up that works the triceps. Position yourself so that this arm is against the body. This arm, I like to press it on the floor for better grip. So my body's on the mat and my hand is on the floor. And I'm going to be pushing up with this hand. Let me show you one. Like so. Keep the body rigid. Up and try and straighten the tricep as much as you can and back down with control. We're going to do one set on this side and one set on the other side. So give them a shake. And here we go. Side try rise. One. Two. Three. Another thing you can do with this arm if it's more comfortable is grab the shoulder. Four. Five. Halfway. Six. Tough exercise. Seven. Keep trying to straighten that arm as much as you can. The more motion you get, the better you're working that tricep. Oh my god, last one. And we flip. And we do the same thing on the other side. Feet together, knees locked, rigid body. Let's roll. One, two. For some reason, I'm much stronger on my left side than my right. Halfway. Six. Four to go. Three, two, one and a zero. We are done the dreaded side try rise. To stretch the triceps, I'm going to show you a side view here. You want to put your hand on your elbow, press gently back so that your elbow is aligned straight up from the shoulder. If you feel it too much in your back, go into a stride position. And breathe into the stretch. Five seconds. Two. One. Gently come out. Other side. seconds. Two.
two, one, gently come out. So the tricep tennis serve, you're going to start off with your feet facing that away. And we get the thing so that it's hanging down your back. Your arm is nice and loose. So you can see it here. I'm going to show you one and then we're going to do 10 with each arm. So what happens is you arch your back, bend your knees slightly, and as you come up, you turn. So I'm facing the camera. So that back foot comes and now my feet are facing that away. Alright, let's try 10 and see what happens here. So arch and number one. Notice my arm stops above my shoulders. Everything is in line with my shoulders. And here we go. Two. dips. I've got a chair here, an ordinary chair, just to show you you can do this on a piece of furniture. Uh, these work the triceps. Just make sure the chair is nice and solid. And we're going down. Let's do this again. Reverse dips. I've got a chair here, an ordinary chair, just to show you, you can do this on a piece of furniture. Uh, these work the triceps. Just make sure the chair is nice and solid. And we're going down. Let's do this again. To stretch the triceps, I'm going to show you a side view here. You want to put your hand on your elbow, press gently back, so that your elbow is aligned straight up from the shoulder. If you feel it too much in your back, go into a stride position. seconds. Two. One. Gently come out. Tricep push-up works pretty much the same as a regular push-up. 
a couple of things. Um, your hands are going to be like this. They form a triangle in the middle. That's your position. I'm going to show you a combination of knee and toes. So the knee position is obviously easier and the toe position is more advanced. So let's get set on our knees. Walk forward until your back flattens out and you've got your hands in this diamond position. So I'm going to do five and five here. You want the hands, the only other difference is the hands should be a little bit lower than in a regular push-up. Put the, the hands under the chest so there's more of your torso sticking beyond the hands. Let me show you one looks like this. And let's do some together. Stretch the triceps. I'm going to show you a side view here. You want to put your hand on your elbow, press gently back so that your elbow is aligned straight up from the shoulder. If you feel it too much in your back, go into a stride position. And breathe into the stretch. Five seconds. Two. One. Gently come out. Other side. seconds. Two. One. Gently come out. The crouching cone curl is hard because you've got gravity against you and you've got a balancing component to it. So what you want to do is spread your legs wide so you can get the weights right in there and get your elbows right against just above your knee and to the side, like so. Make sure your back is in a good arched position. And here we go, we pull them up together. One. When you come down, same rule as apply. You don't quite straighten that elbow. Five to go. thing here too. Isometric leg thing, last one. Kablooey. Very good. Get up slowly, put them away. The crouching cone curl is hard because you've got gravity against you and you've got a balancing component to it. So what you want to do is spread your legs wide so you can get the weights right in there and get your elbows right against just above your knee and to the side like so. Make sure your back is in a good arched position. And here we go, we pull them up together. One. When you come down, same rule as apply. You don't quite straighten that elbow. Five to go. Get my bonus little 
leg thing here too. Isometric leg thing, last one. Kablooey. Very good. Get up slowly, put them away. To stretch the biceps, we need the solid post. And we're going to karate our arms, our hands, and twist out. Position your hand higher than your head so that you feel it going right across the bicep. And we hold. Two, one, come out slowly. Let's do the other side. Karate, nice and high over the head, and twist out through the hips. Breathe into the stretch. Breathe into the muscle you're working. seconds. Two. One. Slowly come out of it. Give it a little shake if you like. I'm going to do wrist curls. You need the chair and you need the skinny band. What we're going to do is separate your feet. step on the band so that you've got something that looks like this. Your uh, upper arms, sorry, your lower arms are flat against your thighs and you want to keep them that way through the whole movement. The wrists are extended right now and we're going to flex them. Let me show you one movement like this. So you want to keep the rest of your arm nice and still on your thigh. Let's do them together. One. So you are working. Notice also that I roll it right down my fingers to get the full extension on my wrist. Three. Roll it down. Four. So you're working the forearms, the underside of your forearms with this. hand muscles. This is a real preventative for things like carpal tunnel syndrome, tennis elbow, 9, 10. Now we're going to flip over and do this side of the forearm. Again, keep your, your forearms flat on, the, on your thighs. So it's just that your wrist is sticking out here. And straight up and down. this from your wrist right through to your elbow. So strong forearms mean you don't get things like tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, which can be quite debilitating. Eight, nine, and ten. Wrist curls. Going to do wrist curls. Mm -hmm the chair and you need the skinny band. What we're going to do is separate your feet and step on the band so that you've got something that looks like this. Your uh, upper arms, sorry, your lower arms are flat against your thighs and you want to keep them that way through the whole movement. The wrists are extended right now, and we're going to flex them. Let me show you one movement, like this. So 
you want to keep the rest of your arm nice and still on your thigh. Let's do them together. One. So you are working. Notice also that I roll it right down my fingers to get the full extension on my wrist. Three. Roll it down. Four. So you're working the forearms, the underside of your forearms with this. The hand muscles. This is a real preventative for things like carpal tunnel syndrome, tennis elbow. Nine. Ten. Now we're going to flip over and do this side of the forearm. Again, keep your your forearms flat on the on your thighs. So it's just that your wrist is sticking out here. And straight up and down. So you're going to feel this from your wrist right through to your elbow. So strong forearms mean you don't get things like tennis elbow golfer's elbow, which can be quite debilitating. Eight. Nine. And ten. Wrist curls. Stretching the forearms after doing wrist curls. Straight arm. Grab your fingers and your thumb. Push out. And you should feel a gentle stretch going up the top of your forearm through your elbow. And we hold. Make sure that arm is straight and the elbow is locked. Five seconds. Two. One. And let's switch. Lock the arm. Push out from the side of the hand. If you want a more intense stretch, push in a bit on the hand. You can also do this sitting down and just showing you standing up with a side view. Five seconds. Two. One. Give them a little shake if you like. 